In this video, we're going to talk about green chemistry, its principles, and the best sort of ways to consider synthesizing different medications. So what is green chemistry? Well, it's an approach to chemical research and chemicals industrial processes that seek to minimize the production of hazardous substances and their release into the environment. So it's really just being self-conscious about all of the different processes we're doing and how it is impacting ourselves as well as the environment. There are 12 sort of key principles of green chemistry. And so they are first off pollution prevention. So number one here, pollution prevention. And so it's better to prevent waste than to treat or clean up waste after it's being created. The second is atom economy. So synthetic methods should be designed to maximize the incorporation of all the materials used in the process into the final product. Uh, less hazardous chemical syntheses. So whenever practical, synthetic methods should be designed to use and generate substances that possess little or no toxicity to human health and the environment. Number four is designing safer chemicals. So chemical products should be designed to affect their desired function while minimizing their toxicity. Number five is safer solvents and auxiliaries. So the use of auxiliary substances, things like solvents or separation agents, should be made unnecessary wherever possible. Um, and then number six, design for energy efficiency. So the energy requirements of chemical processes should be recognized for their environmental and economic impacts and should be minimized. Uh, if possible, synthetic methods should be conducted at ambient temperature and pressure. Number seven is renew, renew, using renewable feedstocks. So a raw material or feedstock should be renewable rather than depleting whenever um, possible. Number eight is reducing derivatives. And so any unnecessary derivatization, sorry, I cannot say that word, um, should be minimized or avoided if possible because those sort of steps do require additional reagents and can generate waste. Number nine is catalysis. So catalytic reagents are superior to stoichiometric reagents, so just making use of those. Number nine, designing for degradation. So chemical products should be designed so that at the end of their function, they break down into degradation products that don't persist in the environment. Number 11, real-time analysis for pollution prevention. So using analytic methods um, that basically need to be de further developed to allow for real-time in-process monitoring and control prior to the formation of hazardous substances. And finally, number 12, inherently safer chemistry for accident prevention. Uh, so just looking at substances and the form of the substance that's used in the chemical process and choosing that to minimize the potential for accidents, um, including releases, explosions, and fires. So those are our 12 principles of green chemistry. Now, given that, the best sort of synthetic routes to a drug are going to use readily available and safe materials. They're going to have a minimum number of steps. They're going to convert as much of the starting materials as possible into the required product at each step. So good atom economy and yield. And it's going to use as little solvent and as little energy as possible. I've mentioned atom economy a couple times, but let's formally define it. So it is the measure of how efficient a particular reaction is in terms of converting as much of the starting materials as possible into useful products. It's a very simple calculation. Atom economy is taken as the molar mass of the desired product, so what you are trying to make. And it's going to divide that by the total molar mass of all the reactants and then multiply it by 100 to give a percentage. So a higher atom economy value means a more efficient process. To give an example of green chemistry, uh, the synthesis of oseltamivir, I can't say it, but you know what I mean, one of these drugs. Um, 
uses a naturally occurring material, so it's called shikamic acid as the starting material. Structure is shown here. It's actually a renewable material and it can be extracted from Chinese star anise, which is shown in the picture here, or it could be also obtained from glucose by fermenting fermentation using genetically modified um, bacteria. So previous to this, uh, this drug was made from petrochemical starting materials. It required huge amounts of materials, generated tons of waste per mole of drug made. So taking this natural material does cut out several steps in the synthesis, making it greener. Uh, the genetically modified or GM bacteria is actually even a better route than the star anise because uh, the yields can be low and dependent on availability of star anise, so this is a little bit greener. And even though we've done that, it still requires a further 10 steps to make this medication. So it still is quite a process, even though we're starting from a little bit uh, more of a natural material to begin with. Finally, we do need to talk about waste solvents because um, many of the waste solvents that we create are used as a medium for reactions in the extraction or purifications of compounds. Many of them are used are organic, which means that they're nonpolar, um, and they are toxic to human and, humans and other organisms. So to make these processes greener, the kind of two, two sort of steps, we can do prevention. So we can think about are there different solvents possible or can we use smaller amounts as much as possible? Or we can think about recycling and reusing. So can we reduce the need to dispose of the solvent? Can we uh, consider the energy of purifying the solvent for reuse? In, in this sort of step and, and can it essentially be recycled. Finally, we also need to consider disposal and make sure that that's as safe as possible so we could do things like incineration, but that can produce carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas, so it, that can contribute to climate change um, and can also produce toxic substances like dioxins, dioxins. And, or we could do injection underground. This is really strictly a very controlled kind of process, but can introduce potentially toxic chemicals into the environment. So might not be the best sort of disposal method. So we do have some considerations here in terms of how we are getting rid of these waste solvents. So that's a little insight into green chemistry, how it works, how, we can make use of its different principles. That's it then for this video. We'll see you in the next one.